Hey, this is Matt from Chicago. You're watching Trucker Josh and Diesel and Chevy on TJV. Keep up the good work. Good morning, everybody. It's time to deliver this stuff. Get this stuff off my trailer. There she is in all her glory. Sitting there naked on my trailer. No tarps, no nothing. I'm done all my work. I even got my tarps tied down here. All I gotta do is back into that door down there. They're gonna quickly offload this and I can drive right out. Good to go. And just like that, I've got an empty trailer behind me and a mini granola bar. Funny how life works. That made no sense. Good bar though. Oats and honey. Okay, so I gotta get up to my reload now. Uh, I should be there around two o'clock. It's in Duluth, Minnesota. And from there we should be able to make it home tonight. As long as nothing goes wrong, as long as nothing goes wrong, knock on wood. Mm. I haven't had a coffee today yet. So I apologize if I'm not making sense and talking with my mouth full of food. I don't know what I'm doing. Can't get rid of the bugs. Ah, whatever. Sorry guys, it's that season, what can you say? What can you do? This is the season when bugs get so depressed they, you know, off themselves on my windshield. I don't know why they gotta bring me into it. I really don't wanna be a part of that. I feel bad for them. They need to get need to get some help, maybe create some groups. Some bug depression groups. Let's get out of here. We got uh so it's gonna be about two and a half three hours to get up because I'm going to stop for a coffee so it'll probably end up being three hours but I feel light as a feather right now I love that feeling right after you get a heavy load taking off your trailer oh beautiful beautiful thing all right Karen why aren't you telling me where to go Karen which way do I go Karen Karen! You there, Karen? Proceed to the highlighted route. Thank you. Oh, there's another car coming. Oh, he's speeding along. Okay, we're gonna wait for him. We're gonna wait for him because I'm a nice guy. I could have I could have cut in front of you, buddy, but I chose to let you go. Didn't even say thank you. Let's get out of here. 200 meters, turn right on, down the Lake Road South. So we're in Rogers, Minnesota. Uh, if you guys know the area and you know that TA truck stop in Rogers, I'm um, pretty much just around the corner from there. I'm like two blocks east of it in Rogers. Turn left on, Main Street, and then 101. What a fancy building. I wonder if that's like a condo or apartments. Fancy schmancy. Wow. What does this sign say here? The Wellstead and Diamond Crest Senior Living. Oh, it's a senior home. Nice. Nice. That was a really nice senior home. Bet you had to have one really nice retirement to get into there. I'm actually going to pull into this TA truck stop I was just talking to you about. I'm going to grab a coffee right here. Just running in to grab a coffee, so uh, probably just park in front of the pump. One kilometer, slight left on CR 49. No, Karen, we're going to TA. I need coffee. Can't you tell? I shouldn't get on the highway without having a coffee. That could be dangerous. Okay, so when I say park in front of the pump, I just mean like not in the pump. Don't do that. That's rude. 
and be very careful. I want to be very careful when uh, teaching you. I'm not really teaching, but when I do this, I gotta be very clear with you is don't park in front of the pumps and go in and have a shower, okay? I'm just going in to grab a coffee. That's it. I'm not gonna get distracted looking at all the gizmos and gadgets and lights and shiny things. I'm gonna park right here. I'm just running in, gonna grab a coffee, come out. Don't leave your truck in this spot here for more than five minutes. Very frustrating and very rude. There we go, you see? Four minutes, that's all it took. And I had to wait in line. Four minutes. You know, it doesn't matter how many times me or other guys on YouTube or whoever, it doesn't matter how many times we say, don't take your half hour break in the pumps. It doesn't matter how many times we say, it, it seems people do it anyways. Or they, they'll, sometimes I've actually seen it more often than I should have. Quite, you'd probably actually be surprised how often I've seen it. I, I've seen it probably once every couple of months, which is way too much, when someone will park their truck in the pumps during the day when there's stuff going on. Lock the doors and go inside and either sit down and eat in the restaurant. When you go in there, they're sitting down to eat or they're going in to have a shower and then they come out and they wander around looking at everything, humming and hawing over the station by these lights and this chrome or not. And meanwhile, people are lined up behind them at the pumps at least every couple of months. And I don't really pay attention either. I, I don't like look look for these things, but I just notice them when I, when, when I happen to see them. That should never happen. So it's not that common, but it's too common. You know what I mean? Don't take your half hour break. And, and what, what I'm talking about now is when I see this, these are times of the day, during the day, when the pumps are pretty busy and there are plenty of parking spots to park in, right? It's not like there's nowhere to park. That just grinds my gears so much. I'm like, that is like the epitome of lazy. Like, it, it, and ignorant, and I don't, I don't know all the other words I could call it. It makes me mad. I don't know if you could tell or not. Don't do that around me. I will get mad. I'll probably say something too. I usually say something to those drivers. I got a big mouth on me. I've only been hit once though. I got a big mouth. If someone's doing something dumb, I find it very hard not to let them know. Because if I don't let them know, so many other people, they'll just shake their head and walk away and nobody will ever tell them. I like to tell people, what are you doing? Why are you parked there? You've been here for 45 minutes. There's a lineup behind you. Yeah, they usually like swear me up and down, but hey, whatever, at least somebody stood up to them, right? I mean, don't start a fight. Don't start a fight, that's not what I'm saying. I shouldn't even talk like this. You gotta be careful in the US too. Uh, most drivers are packing. They, they got something in their truck. You don't wanna get them really mad. Like, don't get me wrong, I don't feel unsafe. I feel safe in the US. I mean, I feel much safer in a truck parking lot with where everyone's got a gun in their truck than up in Canada where, you know, somebody could just come and rob us and they know no one's gonna fight back. But at least here, everybody knows if you mess with the truckers, well, you're probably gonna get a gun in your face. You don't wanna do that. So, it keeps the peace. But at the same time, <laughs> Maybe just let them go. Maybe just let them, maybe just don't say anything. You know what? You might catch them on the wrong day. And I don't want to be responsible. You're gonna send me a message. Trucker Josh! Trucker Josh, you told me to, you told me to stand up to him. And he beat me up. Don't get yourselves hurt. Okay? Be nice to everybody. Even when they don't deserve it, you know? Even when they don't deserve it, be nice to them. Sometimes I gotta learn to keep my mouth shut too. And we're back at it. Oh, I left my vents open in the back. Diesel's freaking out. You forgot something back here, man. You forgot it's windy. It's windy back there, man. I see that, Diesel, sorry. You're gonna have to wait now. It's not gonna hurt you, it's okay. It's not raining or anything, it'll be fine. 
I have one of the vents in the back. You can either open it towards the back or you can open it towards the front, right? I have the one on the passenger side open towards the front, so it's like grabbing the air and sucking it into the cab, sort of. It's right where Diesel likes to sleep. <laughs> Sorry, bud. You're gonna have to wait. I'm not pulling over now. Look at these boats. I would love to have a boat one day. There's no big lakes. Yeah, well, I guess there's some big lakes within like an hour, hour and a half, two hours of my house. So I guess it would make sense, but it's a lot of money to spend on something that I wouldn't use that much. Maybe like when I'm closer to retiring, I'll get more use out of it then. Maybe one day, you know. Keep on dreaming, right? Never stop dreaming. Let's fix this for diesel. Let's point it back where the air won't be rushing in here. He's like freaking out. Excuse me, guys. Excuse me. Excuse me. Pardon me. Excuse me. Hey, it's your fellow Canadian, eh? Get out of the way. Crazy geese. Don't mess with these guys, though, eh? They'll, they'll attack you. <laughs> All right, where am I supposed to be going here? Shipping and receiving this way. Okay. I don't even know what I'm picking up. All I know is I'm supposed to pick something up. No, 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 you stay over there. Stay off the road. What's with all the Canada geese over here? I mean, we are pretty close to the Canadian border, but. Look at these guys over here too, just chilling. Oh, shipping and receiving that way? Oh, I gotta, I gotta pull it wider then. Oh, I'm gonna have to back up a little bit, pull a little wider. Oh, and they're gonna be right in my way again. Ah, oh, man, crazy geese. Shipping and receiving this way. All right. No, don't come back. <laughs> they're coming back. Let's go in here. Shipping and receiving this way. Honk, honk, get out of the way. No, you don't honk at me. They're honking at me. No, no, I'll honk at you. Oh, you're angry now, yeah, you fly away. You fly away, you better fly away. Receiving and shipping that way. Okay, I have no idea, I've never been here before. You know what, I'm just gonna pull into this little open area here and walk into the shipping office and hopefully I'll be in the right spot because this looks like a good spot to load me what is this stuff just random steel pieces well we're in their little scale house that we drove past on the way in scared the daylights out of me because I got here just before two o'clock or so right right around that time right when we expected you right when they were expecting me couldn't find anybody. Nobody around. And then I called them and their message machine says that they close at two. I look at the clock and now by this time, by the time I actually call them, it's like 2.05 or 2.10. I was freaking out. I thought, if they're not gonna load me now, it's Friday. I'm gonna have to wait till Monday to get loaded now. So I was freaking out. But eventually someone came to the back and uh, they were expecting me and just told me to go scale empty and then I gotta go load and then scale loaded, but they are gonna load me, so. That would have ruined the whole weekend. Not that being in Duluth, Minnesota would ruin my weekend, it's a beautiful place, nice people. A lot of geese. But uh, I just don't wanna spend my weekend here. I wanna go home and spend my weekend at home. I'm supposed to go golfing. I don't wanna be here, I wanna be golfing. 
and then we're getting our roof done on Monday so I'm glad everything worked out really glad I'm just going back to their loading area now and they're gonna load me up so this is what they put on me no idea what it is bunch of oddball shapes and sizes bunch of steel so I'm gonna quickly roll this over the scale make sure that all my axle weights are good and we'll tie her down and head home quickly make our way through their fancy little scale house here sort of looks like half a house make sure all of our weights are good write down our axle weights no no Karen first we got to make sure we're legal I don't want any overweight tickets Okay, so my steer tires are allowed 12,000 pounds. So we're gonna put them on the scale first. See what the scale says over there. Okay, so just the steer axle. We're at 11,740, nope, 720. 11,720. Okay, now we're gonna add our drive tires on here. Put our next two axles on here. It'll give us our girl suede up ahead there. Wait for it to calm down a little bit. Dancing around, dancing around. 45, 280. 45, 280. Now that's in. And now the whole truck. What is our girl suede all together? Gross weight all together, we're not even close to being overweight. 73,000, 640, 620, stop dancing. 620, 640, 73, 620. Nobody behind me, so I'm just gonna do some math here now. All right, so to find out our drive axle weight, do 73,620, subtract, sorry, find out our drive axle weight, we'll do 45,280, subtract our steer axle weight, which was 11,020, oops, 11,720. So our drive axles are at 33,560 pounds, 33,560 pounds, I'm pretty much full of fuel, so we have room to fuel up yet, and now to find out my trailer axle weight, we take the 73,620 of the gross, and we subtract the steer tires and drive tires together. So we subtract 45,280, and the back is only at 28,340. So we're pretty close up front, but uh, that's good, we're carrying more of the weight then we're pulling. We want more of the weight on our truck than on the back of the trailer. Otherwise, it's donkey kicking like that over every bridge. I don't know if I've ever been in Duluth here. I know I've been here, like past here before, but I don't think I've ever actually gone through it. It's actually a pretty big city. There's so many cities in America. So many places to see. I bet you there's hundreds of cities and towns I haven't even been to in this country. Amazing. Well, I'm pretty sure Karen's about to talk to me and tell me we're crossing the state border into North Dakota. Don't let me down, Karen. Karen? You there? Here's the border. No? Crossing border, entering North Dakota. There you are, thank you. End of the day. We're not gonna make it quite home tonight. It's a little too late. It's midnight right now, so uh, I'm just gonna stay here near the border. This is at Pembina, North Dakota. Wake up in the morning and head home from here. Otherwise I'll be home at like three or four in the morning. And it's just not worth, you know, getting the dogs all riled up and interrupting Brit's sleep and everything. So she's already sleeping anyway. In 100 meters, slight left on I-29. Nope. We're staying here, Mandy. 
No, we're gonna stay here. Not very often that I stay at this gas tracks. Figure it out yet, Mandy? Karen? Shoot, that's the second time this trip. Oh no! Now she's angry. She wasn't really loud there. Sorry, Karen. Old habits. All right, so hoping there's room. Oh yeah, there's room right there, right in front of us. I made a mistake. I stopped in Grand Forks. I had McDonald's. It was a terrible idea. So now my stomach is very upset and I just want to go to bed. <laughs> But I think I'm gonna have to run inside first. Uh. So it's been a long day again. Ugh, but the weather outside is perfect. Perfect to use these and you get that nice, perfect temperature breeze through your truck. Get the fresh air. And you don't freeze and you don't sweat yourself. Sweat yourself to sleep, I was gonna say. It's a perfect temperature to fall asleep. I think it's like 14 degrees Celsius outside, which is perfect. So I'm gonna get all ready to go to bed here and uh, I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow morning. Thanks for joining me. See you tomorrow. Say goodbye, Diesel. Whoa, you got really close to me there. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Are you filming? Yeah, it's it's it's, it's recording because you want the light on? Yeah, yeah, you want the light, okay. <clears throat> Good night, you bunch of weasels. Hi, my name's Zoe, and this is Grampy Bob, and we live in Ontario, Canada. We watch T J V every day. Trucker Josh, thumbs up.